All right, this is Aaron Brightman from the Scarlet Faithful. Uh, first loss of the season for Rutgers uh, a few minutes after recording this. And, um, you know, overall disappointing night. Uh, lost 27 to 10, a game that Rutgers at times, you know, uh, looked like the better team. Uh, and um, overall, just two huge mistakes uh, with the turnovers. Um, but, you know, just to, to go back a little bit, obviously great crowd. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, like many times before, Rutgers fans have experienced great crowds with nothing to cheer about and really didn't have too much to cheer about tonight. Um, that first drive, you know, it took three nothing lead on that first drive, couldn't score a touchdown. Um, and um, ultimately, you know, I, I liked the uh, offensive approach by Rutgers. Uh, it was much more encouraging uh, in this game and, and really for the long term, if that's the way they're going to uh, game plan more. More often, um, I felt like they were hurt by the fact that they hadn't had that approach coming into tonight. Um, I thought that inexperience um, with the offense running that type of game plan hurt them. Um, the inexperience of Simon, um, you know, showed, I thought, uh, you know, he, he, he made some good throws, um, but he missed a lot of short throws that I thought, you know, they, they were using the short passing game to supplement the running game, which I liked, um, but he missed a lot of those, uh, you know, that, that really could have helped sustained drives, um, and then threw into double coverage a lot. I think his decision-making obviously was under pressure a lot. Uh, the offensive line really struggled. He got hit a ton. He's a tough kid. He played hard. Um, you know, he threw for 300 yards. He had that touchdown uh, at the end, but um, overall just, you know, wasn't where you needed him to be. Uh, and the offense where you needed them to be efficiency wise uh, to be a, a defense like Iowa. I thought the approach was right, but um, they just their inexperience showed their um, uh, inability to execute at times, um, you know, really hurt them. And I thought uh, that, you know, the, the, the interception, you know, Iowa does a great job of, of robber coverages, you know, we're disguising things. Um, and he, you know, didn't see Cooper DeJean per se. And that play made a great play on the run back too. Uh, you know, if he gets tackled early, it's not as big of a, a dagger, but um, running it back 50 some yards is, you know, is an absolute dagger. And then the, the fumble, you know, they found Josh Youngblood in space. Finally, you know, been looking to, for him to make a big play. And then uh, he slowed down and he got hit by two guys at once. So I, I don't quite understand that. Again, I think it's his inexperience in a game like that um, and against a team like this. Um, if he just had kept running, I felt like he would have avoided that type of play. Um, so, you know, obviously that set them back quite a bit and uh, they can never overcome it. Um, you know, this team didn't quit. They played hard in the second half. Um, the defense overall, I thought, played relatively well. Um, you know, they, they did, um, you know, get hurt by the run at the end of the second quarter, early third quarter. They, you know, massive holes. Um, I don't know if they got worn down or what was going on. They were just getting beaten in the trenches. Um, but overall, you know, it, it, listen, they gave up two... Uh, two scores. They give up 10 points, excuse me, 13 points, three scores, 13 points. Uh, they give up, you know, Iowa only had 200 and something yards of total offense. Rutgers outgained them by 100. Uh, so I don't think you complain about the Rutgers defense at all. Um, you know, they played well enough to win. I just think the difference in the game was the Iowa defense forced the Rutgers offense into mistakes and the Rutgers defense did not force the Iowa offense into mistakes. And that's the game right there. Special teams was kind of a wash. I thought Iowa did have two really key and um, important runbacks uh, to about the 40 yard line twice. Uh, Crookshank, you know, was kind of under pressure and Rutgers never had a good run back in the game. So special teams wise, you know, Corsak and Taylor, I didn't look at the stats yet, but it felt kind of even there, um, you know, and then, uh, you know, Iowa's kicker kicked a 51 yard or late. McIntyre only had one shot early. So overall, special teams is about a wash. It really came down to uh, the Rutgers uh, offense, you know, making those key mistakes. So, you know, to take take away from it, you know, I, again, happy uh, that uh, they had a, a, a more uh, aggressive approach, but the execution wasn't there. Um, penalties were a little bit better tonight. Um, you know, I was encouraged by seeing Sam Brown play so much. I really like him. I've been high on him for a long time. I think he's going to emerge now. You know, they were able to get Sean Ryan in the, uh, involved finally. Johnny Langan made a couple of big plays, um, you know, uh, looking at tight end. Um, but uh, again, you know, it's a big what if. I mean, if Vedral or Wimsat were available, would Rutgers have won the game? It's too hard to say. I do think that, you know, as much as fans want to rag on Noah Vedral, um, his experience would have helped huge in this game. I think there were some decisions that Simon made that looking back on it, Vedral probably would have been more conservative or would have run with it more. Um, you know, and I still don't understand with Evan Simon. He had that one nice call 
where he uh, kept it and ran right up the middle for like 15 yards. And they don't seem to utilize his legs as much. I think he does have more ability there than, than we've seen. But that's something Noah Vedral, his experience, uh, you know, he knows exactly when to run, when to uh, throw it away, uh, when to tuck it down and take the sack. Um, and I think Simon, you know, was trying to make plays um, that, you know, ended up being in some bad decisions. So ended up costing him a little bit. Um, you know, so who knows? I mean, Vedral and Wimsat did warm up before the game. They were suited up, obviously weren't ready to go. Um, we'll see what happens. Obviously going into Ohio State next week, you know, it's going to be a tough challenge. And then you're back for a Friday night game against Nebraska. So I think that's what, um, you know, is really going to be the key to the season. I wrote this before the year. I mean, that, that two game homestand uh, with Nebraska and then by and then Indiana is, you know, the difference between giving them a chance to make a bowl game or not. Uh, they're, you know, most likely going to be three and two coming back for that. You win both of those games, you're five and two, you're one game away going into the five game stretch. That's brutal, but gives you a chance. Um, if you don't beat Nebraska now, um, you know, the road to a bowl game is, is, is pretty tough. I mean, of course, Michigan State's not looking very good. Maryland is looking good though. So, um, you know, it's going to be tough. I think this game brought uh, Rutgers back to reality. You know, Iowa, listen, we don't know what Iowa's was going to be. They may win nine games and win the West. Who knows? Like, this is not a bad Iowa team. I just think that Rutgers in the first half certainly looked, you know, they, they at times looked better uh, than Iowa. But obviously, listen, good teams. Iowa defense just wears you down and they, they, they forced Rutgers into mistakes, cost them the game. Uh, it's disappointing the way it went out. You know, it really wasn't ever super close. The fans, I feel bad for that were there because you really had nothing to cheer about. But um, I, I think, you know, and, and the reaction online, I, I have to digest it. But, you know, people are definitely frustrated, uh, rightfully so. Um, I think, you know, this is year three of Shiano. But, I, I, again, it's a young team, uh, and I think you saw it tonight. And I think uh, there is some positives uh, with this team. I think, you know, and by the way, Christian Isian, Isian excuse me, uh, tremendous game. I don't know what he finished with. Yeah, at one point he had 11 tackles. Uh, you know, he had the uh, he had a sack. He had a forced fumble, um, a pass breakup. I mean, he was everywhere tonight. Uh, he looked really, really good. Uh, and he's he's been he's probably been the most consistent player for this defense for the last three years. So he doesn't get enough credit. Um, but overall, I just think that you know, offensively, uh, they're still meshing. And um, you know, quarterback play what isn't where it's needed to be. Um, and as the Big Ten play gets going now, I mean, it's, uh, you know, is this offense going to get better? Again, I, I like the approach, but uh, they're very green. They looked ex inexperienced tonight and, um, you know, they weren't able to execute. And uh, until Rutgers can be more efficient offensively, it's going to be tough to win Big Ten games. So um, overall, that's my takeaways. I don't know if it's a little bit of a ramble or a rant, but, um, you know, disappointing night. Um, but long season to go and, um, you know, some encouraging things to think about just personnel wise, um, combination wise, uh, the way they, you know, employed, uh, certain players and certain, uh, um, calls. Um, but overall, you know, the results, uh, not anywhere where we had hoped they would be. So, um, thanks again for watching this and, and reading and watching everything at the Scarlet Faithful. And, uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll be back soon.